Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see everybody here. Uh, I am very proud to be able to come and celebrate with you. I want to thank uh, Director Andrew Reese. Let's give Andy a big round of applause and the entire team here at DDS. Allison White and Ricardo Thornton, thank you for your service to Washington, D.C. as well. Uh, and I would also like to uh, recognize uh, Sharon Hines, who is the director of the D.C. Department of Aging and Community Living. So it's always wonderful to be here, uh, and especially to ce celebrate Developmental Disabilities Month. Uh, and to be among so many passionate people who work every single day to make D.C. more inclusive. So I uh, know uh, that DDS always represents us well uh, and is focused on how we can ensure that everybody is connected to D.C. in every aspect of the great quality of life uh, that we enjoy here. I'm especially proud of the work of DDS uh, throughout COVID and coming back from COVID. So give them a big round of applause. I said, Andy, how are we doing this? And so many of our, our team and all of the vendor and, and contract team that supports us and our residents went above and beyond uh, to serve our residents. So part of our charge in the comeback, you've heard me talk about the comeback plan, right? So what I mean when I say that is how can our city be just as strong, just as vibrant, even more inclusive co coming out of COVID than when we went into COVID? Uh, and we learned some things, didn't we? We learned how to stay better connected. We learned how to use technology. You know, one big thing that I learned is that the employment community can work better with our developmental disability population. More flexible, more technology, more ways to put your skills and talents to work to make D.C. a better place uh, to year uh, to live. So one of the ways um, each year that we focus on how to better serve you is with our budget. Uh, and we've made very good progress uh, with our investments. In 2017, we were proud that we settled the 40-year class action lawsuit, Evans versus Bowser. <laughs> now, you know I wasn't around 40 years ago. It didn't start with me, but it ended with me. And DDS, and the director knows this well. Uh, we, we learned some things. It's not good to be uh, in a lawsuit and have a superior court judge trying to manage an executive agency. None of that is good. But we did learn some things, uh, and it is incumbent upon all of us, me with the budget, you with your programs and services, to make sure we never go back there. Are you with me? Can I count on you to do that? So I was proud that last year uh, we broke ground on the Joy Evans Therapeutic Recreation Center in Ward 7. It's going to be a $40 million project, and it will be the premier therapeutic recreation center in the region. So when it opens in January, it will serve residents along the full spectrum of physical and cognitive needs. We were also proud last year um, when we invested $500,000 to expand eligibility for individuals with developmental disabilities. And I'm proud that the budget I sent to the council last week is also focused on how we can be a more inclusive city. For example, $6.8 million to fund dedicated child care slots for infants and toddlers with disabilities and out-of-school time opportunities for students with special needs. 
$400,000 to create 360 new summer camp slots uh, in sports and aquatics for youth with special needs. And over $740,000 to increase the personal needs allowance for individuals with disabilities. This additional funding will provide approximately 1,200 individuals with increased personal needs allowance funding from $100 to $150 per month, which can be used to pay for personal needs not covered by Medicaid or Medicare, such as clothing, cosmetics, hobbies. Um, the things that people need to live. So I want to shout out our team at DDS, also Deputy Mary Waring Turnage, I see his office represented for the very, very hard work um, that we have done together uh, to join the National Expansion of Employment um, Opportunities Network, which is a federal initiative to improve employment opportunities for people with disabilities. We are committed to making sure that all of our residents have the resources and support it uh, to live their lives to their full potential. And I'm just really, really proud of the work that we have done together. I hope um, that, have we already produced, so I get to give you, uh, Andy, um, on behalf of the community, uh, this proclamation. Whereas Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month celebrates individuals um, and their invaluable contributions uh, to life in the District of Columbia. Through the Developmental Disabilities Administration, the District of Columbia is committed to providing critical services to eliminate barriers for people with developmental disabilities. Whereas, under the theme, Through My Eyes, this year's event invites employers, family, friends, and community to imagine daily experiences through the eyes of people with disabilities. And whereas, the D.C. Department of Disability Services, the D.C. Developmental Disabilities Council, the Disability Rights D.C., and Project Action, and Quality Trust for Individuals with Disabilities are partnering to mark the 36th anniversary of this important Woo! event. Join me, Director. Now, therefore, I, the Mayor of Washington, D.C., do hereby proclaim March 2023 Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Great work, Nancy. Great work.